Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench, and back with another video about this uh, A20 nose gear from Hong Kong Models. So, just been looking on the Facebook page and stuff the last couple of days and there's been a lot of talk about this nose gear and strength and everything. So, basically, this is what you get in the kit. This is the nose gear bay, okay, um, which is beautifully moulded, beautifully detailed. Um, very very nice indeed so the way this works is this comes along and goes like this you've got this little tiny tab on here that you can see and that goes in there and that's sandwiched in there and you have to do this while you're building the the undercarriage bay and then this leg has in there the tiniest little recess you've seen in your life this tiny little recess that goes on that peg I've just showed you and then these two bits here they go onto these two bits here so basically this goes in like that and those two bits go in there and that is your nose gear assembly so I'm going to just assemble it quickly outside of the outside of the nose gear or outside of the bay should I say and as you can see it is very very weak the whole weight of the aircraft is basically on that point there and on those two points there behind my fingers so and, and and it's all plastic it's just now this is the problem it's beautifully made to scale okay but in, and i've talked about this before and if you're bored then just fast forward um if manufacturers make things to scale the scale people say that's beautiful it's really really nice and then the people that want to move their models around put them on display say it's bloody rubbish because it's too weak so they can't win so everybody said about this so there was a problem with the nose gear and everything and as, you, as some of you will know the, the kit the Hong Kong models A20 took forever to turn up in the UK I got one from China it was kindly sent to me by Hong Kong models so I actually sent these parts up to Alastair up at Aircraft um and a few other little bits and pieces as well of all this lot here so you can see basically what all goes together with it and he actually made the nose gear and here it is this is the nose gear in brass i just want to say this black mark here that's not a hole that is an ejector pin mark that i filled in so that when ali did his copy for his casting he wouldn't have the ejector pin mark there so um this is basically um, to all intents and purposes, a copy of the Hong Kong model's part. So there we go. You can see it's very nice. It's all the same. Now, <clears throat> the main difference is these two great big bungs here, they are designed to fit inside the front wheel, as I've showed you before. You can see you've got in the front wheel, you've got some big holes in the center. OK, and they're designed to go in there. What Ali has done with his, he's given you these little resin, um, 3D printed resin parts that will go in, here I am as ever, unprepared. And those little 3D printed resin parts will fit inside the wheel and then you've got a little one millimeter axle to go through. So you, you'll need them, if you use an aftermarket or the kit wheel, you'll need these because obviously all the aftermarket is designed to fit the, the stock nose leg, okay? So you've got those and you also get this little axle that goes between as well so that's all well and good so we've now got a nice strong brass bronze whatever you want to call it undercarriage leg the problem is you've still got the issue with these links here and it's really this one that's the problem this one's not so bad this is actually a support that goes in that basically stops the leg going forward but that, that's that's fine um, as long as you get a good joint in there maybe put a pin through it whatever I don't know um, so what Ali did then was he realized there was an issue so he's released this which I showed you in another one of my reviews which you can get from him if you've bought the nose gear you can get this from him free of charge and then basically what that does that slots in there so you've got this this sort of poor plug whatever it is on the top of the undercarriage leg you can see the standard kit part is much shorter it doesn't have this great big plug on it so what you do is you leave that on there and then this basically you drill a hole in the back of the nose gear put this through 
and then that's going to sit in there like that and then basically let's just put it all together uh, which way around do we go in that's it that way so that's all going to go in there so basically your nose gear is now going to sit in that block and it's going to sit there quite happily and be strong now if you're into having scale nose gear bays you might not like that you might think it's a bit obtrusive whatever um, and I know that I've been looking on the the uh, Facebook page there is a there is a, um, a Facebook page for, for building this model and a few people are on there building it and Tom Wilson has basically he, he he came up with this plastic block first of all and then obviously Ali saw that and did this sort of 3d printed thing um, and the design is basically you drill it through and put it from behind from what I can gather, Tom didn't like the look of having this great lump inside. So what he's done is actually used the plastic leg rather than the brass leg. Because at the end of the day, you are going to get a much stronger joint when you use plastic to plastic. You get a weld joint with, you know, with um, extra thin or something. It's going to be much stronger than if you use super glue. However, saying that, I have found this stuff here. VMS Flexi 5KCA, the black thing, to be extremely strong. It takes a long time to cure. They say 24 hours, but it does actually, when it dries, it's very strong and it's quite flexible. It's not all brittle. It doesn't just snap like normal super glue. So that's the issue, you see. If you want to just use this brass leg as they gave you it in the kit, what you're going to do is fit these plastic parts to the brass leg, just like you would to the plastic, but the issue now is not only have you got the weak plastic parts, you've also got a super glued joint, which isn't as strong as a welded joint with extra thin plastic to plastic. So um, that's why he's made this. A fair play to him, he's come out, he's made that, and that is the that is the correction. At the end of the day, this front nose gear is just not up to the job of supporting the model. And before anyone says about weights, you must remember, okay, if Let's get something long. If this is your model aircraft and this is the base, all right, I have my main gear here. This is my main gear and it becomes a tail sitter. Okay, so when it's like this, the weight of the model is on the main gear and the tail. If I could balance it perfectly, all of the weight would be on the main gear. There'd be no weight here and here because nothing's touching the ground. All the weight would be on the main gear. So if this tail is pulling over the main gear because it's 30 grams heavier than the nose gear, if I put 40 grams in the nose, okay, how much weight is on there? How much weight is there? If that's 30 grams, and that's 40 grams. I've got 40 grams of weight in there and there's 30 grams there. If I've put 40 grams in there to counteract it, I know you've got the lengths and everything, but roughly speaking, there's 10 grams on there. Okay, we've all seen models where they will sit on their wheels and as soon as you touch the tail, they will just teeter over. You can imagine there's an extra no weight on the nose gear at all. So it's not that. It's not the fact that there's weights in the kit and the, too much weight makes the nose gear break. You could reduce the weight until the model is just balanced and there'd be like five grams actually on the nose wheel. The weight of the model is on the main gear. And talking about that, I think Ali is going to make um, brass bronze main gear for this kit. So this got me thinking. OK, now I know I've waffled on now for what is it, about 15 minutes or 10 minutes, whatever. So I was thinking about this last night. And I was thinking, what can I do? And some of you have made notice my hands are dirty. So I've been out on the milling machine today. I'm going to put these plastic parts away because I don't want to damage anything. Okay, so I'm going to pull this away. <clears throat> so I've been out on the milling machine today and I've been having a play and I've made this. And this is a jig to enable me to make that metal in the carriage fit with a metal arm. So I've got here a 1.1 millimeter drill. I'm going to make sure this leg's the right way up. That's the right way up. You can see I've still got the slug on there and there's a good reason for that. So I'm going to put this drill through here. I'm going to slide that drill through 
through that leg. Go on. I knew this would happen when the camera's on. It'd be probably easier if I did it the other way around. Put the drill through there. Okay, through that side. And then through. Okay, so now we've got our nose gear held in there. <clears throat> it's stopped from going side to side by this, this it's encapsulated here. We've got this slot here where the leg is sat, so the top can't move side to side. And then what I've got is a piece of 1.2 millimeter brass rod, and I can slide that through there, like so. And this piece of brass rod is 19, I think it's 19.8 millimeters long, I think from memory, I think. Yeah, 19.8 millimeters long. Because I've worked out these holes here, let's take that out of there. This hole here is where this part goes. And what we were doing, we're replacing this part here with a piece of 1.2 millimeter brass rod. So we need to drill that out to 1.2 millimeters. That's about one millimeter at the moment. We need to drill that out. I don't think a piece of 1.2 will go in there. Oh, it will just, it needs to be opened out. So I think the best thing to do is drill right through and then put a piece of plastic card behind. And it also gives it more support. And what I've done, I put this together and it's such a snug fit, it's lovely. Okay, I put that together and across the bottom of there, it's 19.8 millimeters. So if we imagine this is all gonna be square, here it's gonna be 19.8 millimeters as well. So you've got these little blanking off discs on the back of the part you can see here. So what, the, what they've done is they've sort of made the hole as deep as the plastic is thick, but put that part on the back to support it. So what I would suggest is shave that off and then drill through 1.2 and actually um, put a piece of plastic card on there. I've also got some 1.5 millimeter brass. Now obviously I've only got one of these legs and I'm gonna now show you how I'm gonna fix that to that. All right, so there we go. Now the other thing I did, first of all, I came along and I actually made this to the right length. And what I found is it's very, very difficult to keep it in position in the jig. I could put a couple of grub screws in or something, but hey. Um, so what I've decided to do is get a piece of brass rod, 1.2 millimeters still, but make it over length and then cut it to size when we're done. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is give this a good clean with a fiberglass pencil. Okay, and also this piece of brass rod, we'll give this a good clean, fiberglass pencil, and then not touch it. And I'm gonna slide that into there, just like so, roughly in the middle, doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab some Mr. Tool Cleaner and a cotton bud and just, in fact I should take that rod out and give the leg a good clean as well. Just to make sure it's all nicely degreased. I've already cleaned this off with brake cleaner because obviously I was using it to test when I was making this little jig. And there we go, right. And there we are. So. That's going to go in there and then we can braise this together. So I'm going to get myself ready for do some braising and then I'll be back. All right, so I've got a ceramic mat here, which is horrible. It leaves bits and pieces bloody everywhere. Um, and I've got the brass rod in there. I've cleaned it off as you've seen with a fiberglass pencil. I've gone over with Mr. Tool Cleaner and now I've added some flux. This is just plumber's flux. Okay. And so now we've got our little braising gun. So we're going to see how we get on. I'm going to do this live on camera. This is the first time I've done it, obviously, because I've only got one of these legs. So we'll see how it works out. I've got my solder here. This is um, Rosin Core solder, uh, high tech, silver bearing, 0.22 diameter. It came from um, Radio Shack, which was over here was Maplin's, which no longer exists. So, so the reason I left that slug on is I can apply heat to that slug. So I can get heat going into it without having, 
I can see the heat in the brass rod so I can get heat into it without actually depositing any debris so now you can see how easy it is to move that brass rod so I need to get some in from the back here I'm not really worried about having a perfectly tidy joint because I think it's going to hold the heat actually for the solder nope it's cooled down enough I'm not worried about having the um, a really tidy joint, I just want a strong joint. And the other thing I've just remembered, I forgot to show you, there is, there is a gap between this rod and the leg. And the reason for that is, when you look at the plastic parts, because of that little, that little tab on the back, there is a, ow, that is quite warm, there is a standoff. Um, we'll get some more heat into it. There is a standoff, so I have purposely left a gap in there, and I'm hoping this is going to work. So, if it doesn't, you'll never see this video. I want to get some more solder in there, I think. So we'll get, get some heat going in again. The reason I'd made this jig, I was thinking for a very small fee, I actually want to move that over. There we go. I was thinking for a very small fee, I could do this for you guys. There we go. I think that might just do it. Looks like we've got a decently strong joint. We have a good level of um, solder there. I do actually still need some more. I can't believe it. Maybe I should have used some thicker solder wire. Just get some heat and see if I can improve the flow of the solder there. Make it go around the brass rod a bit tidier. And there we are. So we will see, I'll give that 10 minutes to cool down and we'll see how that's come out. But um, as you can see, it's a bit of fun. <laughs> Let's see how it's worked. All right, so there we go. That's all soldered and it looks like a nice strong joint. Um, as I say, I'm not too worried about the build-up of solder. It's, I think it's, uh, it's worth having that in exchange for having a strong leg. We'll see how strong it is. I'm just going to just remove the excess from here. And this should be roughly the right length. Okay, so I've just left an equal amount sticking out the sides. And then I can come along with a file. Just clean the ends of them up. Just like so. These Protec cutting cutters from Dave Coley, he sends you these free sometimes with a kit. They are absolutely amazing for cutting brass rod and stuff. I mean, look at them, they're completely undamaged. They're, they're awesome. Right, so I've just realized, um, while I've been on camera, I've made a bit of a balls up here. I just want to check the length of that. It should be about 19.8. 19.89, not bad. So, um, So this side needs to be just filed down a bit more. There we go, that should be about 19.8 now. 19.81, there we go. So we're well, happy with that. Right, so um, the intention was to swivel this up and take it out. But I, of course I'd forgotten that this lump on here is going to stop me swiveling it up. Even if I remove that lump, I've still got this here because I, I left this bit in the centre here. 
to make sure the leg stays square and central. So um, what I'm going to try and do is remove that lump from the top. Okay, and this is how good these cutters are. <sighs> Look at that. It has removed that lump. Wow, that sprung off somewhere. So we've now got that taken off the top of there. We've got our leg on here. Now I'm going to take this pin out and I'm wondering how much I'm going to be able to swivel this over. Oh, there we go. Look at that. And then I can lift it out and there we go. There's our leg. And I don't really know what sort of test to do. I know that I can just clean this up with a couple of old sanding sticks. We've got that lump on the top there that needs to be filed down. So I think what I'll have to do is do a little modification if any of you do want this done and then if you send it to me with a lump on you can get it back with a lump on. What I'll do is I'll mill a slot down there so I can actually tip it over. Um, so I, I just thought this is going to be the best way if you're if you're worried about accuracy in your wheel bay. If you're not worried about accuracy in your wheel bay the solution from Aerocraft is absolutely spot on. It's going to be very very strong, it's going to make it stable um, and everything. But you can see here that is, I'm not going to go mad because at the end of the day it's not a flying model but you know it's not a suspension part on a racing car or something but um, we can come in here with a with a round file and clean this up. If any of you do want this done I won't clean it up for you because that is the bit that you would be fussy about. But we can remove a lot of that excess solder from in there and there we go. So I think at the beginning of the video I said about brazing didn't I? It's not brazing at all it's it's um it's soldering but soldering with a flame rather than a than an iron we can remove some of that brass from in there. Uh, solder, sorry, not brass. And there we go. I think we've got a nice, tidy, clean joint. It doesn't really matter what it looks like from the top. It's underneath that matters, isn't it? So, uh, there we are. So all we've got to do now is drill out these holes in here. First of all, I'm going to shave off. Where's my knife? I'm going to shave off these plastic lumps here. And then let's grab a decent sanding stick and just sand that flush on the back. So, as you can see, they haven't quite gone through. It is this one, isn't it? Yes. So there we go. So we can shave that one off there. And then we can grab our drill, our David Union device, a 1.2 millimeter drill in the pin vice. And then go through this that one yes 1.2 millimeters just go through and then the same on this one now I did originally plan on doing this with 1.5 but it just looked a bit chunky and I think the 1.2 is perfectly strong enough so now we can put this together like so. And then we can slot in our undercarriage leg, wrong end nudge, into there, into there, just like so. And it should sit flush with the outside and give us a square undercarriage bay. So that should all be square there. There we go. It is. 
So there's our nose gear. And you ain't going to break that. And if you don't glue it in to start with, you can still retract it while you're doing your assembly. And then when you're ready, just pull it out, fit the part in behind, which is here. So that part's going to go in into there. I need to get these. There's obviously a burr on the end of that shaft, isn't there? So that one's going to go into there. Sorry, that one's going to go into there, the fat one. And then this one's going to go into there. So that's all sitting in. Push that leg in there, just like so. And then that is going to go into there. And if you want to, you could have a go at pinning it. But if you super glue these joints here, where these shafts go through, and you super glue that, I think your nose gear should be strong enough. And at the end of the day, if it does break away, it's just going to break away. You just glue it back together. And that's that. I was thinking about doing something with this forward bulkhead. But um, I've changed my mind. The other thing I wanted to check. And I'm going to check this on camera. And if I need to make a change to my jig, I will. I'll take this apart and start again. If you put this part. I'll just show you. So you know I'm not lying. I don't tend to lie, but. That part there and that part there. If I measure across the back, it's 5.3 millimeters. So this should be 5.3 millimeters. It's 4.8. So we're we're half a millimeter out. So that's that's not going to make any difference at all. Um, but you can see they've got the space. You can see that that leg is away from that brass rod. So um, here we are. So I reckon, I personally reckon that is the solution. Get the brass, get the gear from Aircraft, and then do this, and you will have a very strong nose gear. All I've got to do now is get a couple of pieces of plastic card, glue them over there, so that the um, so that it doesn't slide around. Alternatively, you could actually, I mean, this here is the pain in the ass because you can't lay it back because of the way it's designed. Um, but alternatively, if you don't actually plug those holes while it's in the, while it's out, you can do this, take it out of your model. You can fit it in after the model is built, but you're still going to have this thing sticking out. I don't really know if you can get away with having that retracted back, like so. Perhaps if you don't glue the nose gear in properly, the bay. I don't know. But it's, um, it's one of those kits that's been designed to have the nose gear fitted um, as one of the first parts of the operation. So there we go. So if you want me to do this for you, drop me an email, nigelsmodelingbench at gmail.com um, and let me know where you are because with things like this, the postage is going to be more than the bloody job. Failing that, what I was thinking was if, if you wanted me to do one of these for you and I give you no guarantees, <laughs> it's not going to break, but I, I don't think that's going to break. That's... That seems, you can see me there, I'm banging it on the bench. I'm not going to try and break it off with pliers and stuff because it's the only one I've got. But that is extremely strong. Um, the other thing you could do is perhaps buy a nose gear leg from Aircraft and have him deliver it to me. Um, just put on the order, you know, deliver it to Nigel and I'll do this and then send it on to you. Obviously there will be... A very small fee for doing this and then you've got the postage to think about which 
these days, if you're not in the UK, postage is an absolute bloody joke. So let me know what you think, guys. Um, I think this is the solution. Oh, the other thing I forgot to say, what we need to do now is just cut these diagonal legs, because what we've done is replaced that part there. We've replaced that horizontal rod there. So what we need to do now is cut those legs off and glue them on to there, and then we'll have a scale undercarriage. So, as I say, that's 4.8 millimetres, and the standard kit is 5.2. So it's, it's half a mil difference, which is nothing. It just basically means that the further back we go there, the more the leg leans. We've just got slightly less lean on it than than if it, you know, I mean, if you look at it half a millimetre, that's going into there, there like that. If I move this forward half a millimetre, you can see the difference it makes to the angle. It's, it's nothing, in fact, that's more than half a millimetre, it's nothing. So uh, there we go, it works. So um, it's not often I, get, I have to do videos and do it as a one-off. So uh, yeah, what I'll do, if you do want it done, what I'll do is I'll mill a slot in here and then I will be able to then pivot that leg up and leave the slug on it and still be able to get it out. So you'll have your slug on there should you want it because you might want to use the 3D printed thing as well. I don't know, but uh, there we go. Right, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to put this up on the Facebook page as well because I know this is something that everybody has been talking about and, and I reckon this is the thing. Just a quickie guys, before I go, I know it's going to be asked. The fiberglass pencil was RS514868. This comes, you can either get it with like a, a wire brush or fiberglass. That's what I use there. These cutters are ProTec modelling tools. They're from Dave Coley's Emporium. Okay, it's a model shop, brilliant model shop. And as I say, you'll generally find, if you buy a half decent kit, you'll chuck a pair of these in the box. So they're brilliant for cutting wire. And the brazing, the, the hot gun I used was Iroda quality tool. I've had this for years. They probably don't even exist anymore. I think I probably got it from Maplin's. It's Iroda Solder Pro 70K 4-in-1 uh, but butane powered soldering iron kit. Okay, you can see it's a heat blower, blowtorch, hot knife and soldering. So just have a look. Search on Amazon for soldering iron, whatever, gas soldering iron. I don't know. Um, the mat I used was this I got from a model show many, many years ago. Don't know if they still exist. Photo etched solder mat. Um, I wouldn't bother. Every time you get it out, it just leaves bloody bits and pieces everywhere. And it's ceramic. And I don't know how safe or unsafe or whatever it is. But um, yeah, it's, it's horrible. What I need to do is make up like a metal disc for it to sit in and then I don't have the, all the edges breaking away all the time. It's, it's horrible. The solder paste I use, the flux paste I used was this one, Powerflow Flux. Um, I would generally use a liquid solder but obviously for something like that you need a paste to sort of get some area build up. Um, and the solder as I say was, was this one here, 62362 Rosing Quartz Solder. Um, I would normally, yesterday when I was doing some tests, I used this stuff here, which is just 99.25Cu.75, uh, 0.8mm of diameter solder. I used that, but I found it was a little bit too blobby, so I probably need something in between the two. But um, And as I say, that's the first time I've done it, so obviously practice makes perfect. But uh, as you can see there, with it all just... Sort of roughly filed down and sanded out, it's absolutely fine. When you look up in there, when you think you're gonna have a front bulkhead here, you know, how much you, you're, how much you're actually gonna see? You're not gonna see much of it. But, uh, there we go. Thank you for watching, guys, as I say, and um, I will be back soon with more stuff for you. Um, yeah, my mojo's waning at the moment, but uh, I'm sure it'll come back very, very soon. Bye for now.